Hello everyone and welcome back to the Nerd Cave. In this video, we are going to revisit an old project I have done over one year ago, which was a binary clock, and we're gonna upgrade this and add a few components to give this a bit more functionality. By adding this OLED display and two push buttons, we can then also display the weather on this clock, and we can use the push buttons as a menu system to display different information. The microcontroller we will use for this project is the Raspberry Pi Pico W. In this new version of the clock, we will not have a circular PCB because this PCB made it a little bit difficult to read the time in binary. We are still going to use the binary number system, but the layout is going to be a little bit different. So let's go look at the design and we create a prototype and then we need to make a PCB. And of course we are going to use JLC PCB who is the official sponsor of this channel. More about them later in this video. For a new binary slash weather clock, this is the design I have come up with. I'm going to have the Pico W visible in the front of the PCB because I think this looks very cool and nerdy. I don't know, what do you think? Should I have the PCB at the back in future videos? Or do you prefer to have more electronics out to make it look a bit more nerdy? And then next to this, we're going to have our OLED display with our two buttons. And then here we will have the hours, the minutes and seconds, and this will be displayed in binary. Now, if you're not sure how binary works, let me quickly give you a crash course in it. So binary in short is just a number system that a computer use. And this could either be a one and zero. And this is based on a base two decimal system. So in other words, if we have 2 to the power of n and we have 4 digits like here, this can be 2 to the power of 4. So this can display a number up to 16. Now if you see here, we will have our hours, minutes and seconds. And if we look at these row here, this will be 2 to the power of 0. Or in other words, this will be 1. This will be 2 to the power of 1 will be 2. 2 to the power of 2 is 4 and 2 to the power of 3 is 8. And we just need to go add these ones that is on. So if we look here, only 4 is on. So this will be 4. And here we will have 1 plus 4. This will be 5. And then here we will have 1 plus 2 plus 4. This will be 7. Here we will have 1. 1 plus 2 is 3. And here we will have 1. So we can see the time here is going to be 1 o'clock, 17 minutes and 54 minutes. And that is how easy it is to read the time of this clock using binary. Now that you are an expert in binary, let's look at the prototype which I have already made. Since this space is limited on a breadboard, we're only going to do the hours and minutes. Now, if you want to follow along and build this prototype as well, I have made this circuit diagram in Fritzing that you can follow along. Now that we have a working circuit, we just need to upload all the code, which is available on my website. Head on over to netcave.xyz, link will be in the description, and scroll down to Raspberry Pi Pico and click on Get Started. Then click on Projects and look for Binary Clock Weather Monitor. Then if you go here on the right, you'll see there's a section that will say Code, and here you can download all the code by clicking on this one. So click here to download it. Then once it is downloaded, Go and extract this code. So in Fonny, when you click on View Files, you'll get this Files tab on the side. And here I have that extracted code. Now here's my Raspberry Pi Pico. I already have MicroPython installed. And if you're not sure how to install MicroPython, I will put a video in the description on how to get started. Now all we want to do is upload this code to the Pico. So we can just click here, hold Shift and click all of this. Right click and say Upload to and this will upload all the code to the Pico. Now, the things that you're gonna need to go change is this config.json. You're gonna have to put your internet Wi-Fi address here and also your password. And then for this weather API key, um, you cannot use this one because I will change this after the video. But here you need to go set up a weather API key. I have made a video on this, which will be popping up now on the screen and there will be a link in the description. So this is for us to go put in our city and our country. And then same with this daytime API. Now, if we look here, this is just a library for the screen and also the U request for the network. And then here we have our main file. We import all those libraries. We import that information from the JSON file. 
and then here we set everything up then we connect to the Wi-Fi and if we scroll down here we extract the date and time and here we fetch the weather and if we go down a little bit and here we set up all the LEDs how to update our LEDs with the time information and then here everything is to update the OLED display to show the current weather information so running this code we will get the following so here we can see our time at this moment um, we're gonna go from right to left we have one and then here we have four so it's now 1400 and here we have one plus four so it's five and then this is nine so this is now 2 p.m. and 59 minutes and here we see it says nerd cave clock it shows the weather data Qingdao and currently the temperature is 3.78 degrees Celsius um, our description it's clear outside and our humidity is 28 percent now a lot more detail about how to set this up and how the code work is available on my website so you can just go read through that blog post so now that we have a working prototype we can head on over to EZDA and we can design a PCB now the PCB design is very straightforward we have the Raspberry Pi Pico here and this footprint was just from a community member and here we have all our LEDs connected to different pins on a Pico and then if we go here we have the OLED display which will connect to the I squared C here on GP17 and 16 and we just have our two buttons we also have included this connector here so that we can power our Pico through a 5 volt and ground pin so you can use a USB cable cut it open or if you have a power supply you can then power this so you don't need to plug the USB into the Pico to power this so after making this schematic and then we can make a PCB layout of this I will make a course on this so later it should be after January I will make a PCB course but if we click here on 2D we can see here is my final PCB that looks like the one in the sketch now we can order a PCB and to do that we'll click on fabrication and go to one click order PCB and this will ask us to check the design rule checking we'll just say yes we will see there's no problems and here we can go directly to JLC PCB who is the sponsor of this channel JLC PCB offers high quality PCBs at a low price throughout the year they have a lot of specials and we can see the current special at JLC PCB is that if you order a multicolor cell screen PCB you will get $10 off there's also other specials here where you will save $30 on 6 layer PCBs we can also see there's $20 off for PCB layout servers from $0.46 per pin and we can see also premium flexible PCBs only for $2 so if you need a PCB for your next project definitely head on over to JLC PCB there's also a link in the description that you can use to sign up we will click this button one click order we'll wait a little bit and then it says order the data we'll just say ok and you will see this will then open a new link directly to JLC PCB let's just give it a second so here it is uploading your files and here we have our file now you don't want to go change anything here if you want to order more than five PCBs you can change the quantity here and also if you want to change the color of the PCB so in other words if you want to make this blue yellow red purple and so on and all these other things you can just leave as this and then here you can click on save chart let me just zoom out a little bit so you'll see the engineering fee is four dollars and the board here will be three point eight dollars so in the total price will be seven point eight dollars and i can click here save to chart and then order it through jlc pcb oh, that was a long sentence now the PCB files will also be available on my website so if you go here back to upload files you will be able to download that Gerber file or a PCB file and click here on add Gerber file and then you can go add that PCB file and then you can also order it and after a few days I received this high quality PCB from JLC now all we need to do is go solder all these components and then we can go upload the final code and here is the final board with all the components soldered now I've decided to make this blue and red you can use any color LEDs but you're gonna have to maybe change the resistance a little bit so for the 
blue LEDs, I've used 1K resistors, so it's not too bright. And for the red ones, I've used 330 ohms. So if you use green or yellow LEDs, you're going to have to go check which resistance will work for you so that it is not too bright. In Fusion 360, I took like five minutes to quickly model a case to hold my PCB. I will make a better case in the future. This one just have a big open hole here so that I can give it 5 volt and ground so that we don't have to power it in front of here with a USB. But for now, we'll just power it here and then we'll see the final project. I will upload the files on the website and if you want to learn how to quickly 3D model something like this, let me know in the comment section and maybe I can make some Fusion 360 videos. Here we have the same code running and we can see everything is working perfectly. Let me just quickly zoom in here with the camera and we can see here the weather is being displayed here and then here our LEDs are working as it should. So we can see the temperature did not change a lot and the humidity is still 28%. I hope you found this video helpful and that you enjoyed this project. I will see you in the next video.